happens is usually I use a spoon, don't see one, so you're going to have to. The rule in it. my house is that if you stand still long enough, you might just get painted. <laughs> so, stuff. I messed up. There's no such thing as messing up. Don't cross out. Get creative. There is the love. Yeah, you work around that love, sister. Because that's what it's all about. The show is called Faces of Eve. And it started out just Eve. But when I brought in my sisters, I was really inspired mostly out of wanting to see Aziza, which is Claudia Gibson Hunter. Uh, in the Women's Museum. She had done a piece called Nia in the Box, which is a wonderful series of work. And then when I went off and did the Eve thing, I had Nia in the Box in the back of my mind the whole time. So I came back inspired and ready to incorporate this, to put them together. So I felt as though Nia was a very important part of the story of Eve. So Nia in Kiswahili is the word, is purpose and the box. Um, I, I began to work that through. So uh, I grabbed her and we knew that we needed a third person. And the natural complement to that, to both of our work was Francine Haskins. So at this point the work is Francine Haskins, myself, and Aziza. Work explores the ways in which those aspects of ourselves have been diminished because of racism, sexism, oppression, uh, which comes from the outside, but also that has taken root within ourselves. Julie and I both do paintings, dolls. We paint on furniture, bowls. We've written books. So a lot of, we do a lot of the same things. The, the work about Eve is a part of Julie's way of trying to express her feeling about how women, especially black women, have been suppressed and still being suppressed around the world. So this is her response to that in a positive way. It's this declaration of Eve, now that the world has finally come to understand that Eve, or the first woman, was an African woman. This is going back and reclaiming not only who we are, but the revolution. And saying, okay, it's time to kick off our shoes and to roll up our sleeves and get serious about making the revolution by not only raising up our children, but raising up that whole generation raising up ourselves, raising up our race, and just kind of taking claim of who we are. As I was painting, I had this composition, this melody going in the back of my mind. When I was in Africa, there was a kalimba playing in the background, and I've just never, ever lost that wonderful feeling of serenity and you. Uh, utopia basically. So I had that going on in the paintings. I'll tell you this, but Eve was in that garden grooving. She was having a good time and then it was this voice in the back of her head that kept saying, what about Adam? What about Adam? So Adam not only came along but then shortly afterwards and maybe even before him was the snake. So we're kind of dealing with all of those aspects in the work. I've had a ball flipping this piece one way, painting it, flipping it another way, painting it, working, I'm still not finished yet because there is the snake. Now a little while ago, and I know I wasn't supposed to go backward, but if you notice the snake was over there, so you can start to see that the snake is kind of going from one canvas to the other following me. And I can share with you this much. It's the beginnings of Adam. <laughs> it's the beginnings of that. And of course, this is my apple coming open. And the apple is also starting to emerge. And you can start to see the apple in all kinds of different segments starting to appear. And basically, without telling too much about it, um, 
some of the text that's over here is telling Eve to stand up and to be strong. And, and don't take the rap for that apple. You know, don't take the rap. That, that apple isn't really, isn't really your story. That's the story that Adam wrote. So we're also rewriting the story of Eve as we go into this Faces of Eve exhibit. We're rewriting.